Hi everyone, uh, so this is going to be Lyra 8 uh, tutorial video part 4. Um, so you'll notice I've got a little bit of a different setup today. I've got it actually in my lap because I wanted to discuss actual uh, playing technique. Um, so I'm sure mostly everyone who has a Lyra 8 has noticed that the sensors are very, very sensitive. You can get kind of a, a huge dynamic range just depending on how you touch the sensors. Um, but I actually wanted to talk about that in, in the context of more percussive uh, type of sounds. Um, so another shout out to Carl Sadler. Um, the Aoxalis tuning from the last video is actually a hang drum tuning. And uh, that really got me interested in, in kind of researching that method of tuning and uh, other percussive but melodic instruments like the marimba and the kalimba and stuff like that. And so this is actually tuned to a hang drum scale um, at the moment, but it's actually tuned in the fashion of a kalimba, where a kalimba is like the, the thumb drum, and uh, you play it with just your thumbs, and the way it's set up, the lowest notes are in the middle, and then the highest notes are out towards the edge. So. Uh, that's how I've got it uh, tuned up today. Um, so in terms of sound design to get a, a more a snappier or faster attack, um, first of all, I'm quite warm. I'm not, uh, I'm not sweaty, but my, I'm definitely warm. It was really hot out here today and I was outside, so um, I, I'm not sweaty. My hands are not wet, but I am definitely warm. Um, so first of all, I, I find it helps with the quicker attack to have the hold knobs back at uh, my favorite spot just kind of past 12 o'clock. Um, and then I was kind of experimenting around. I, I actually feel like you get a faster attack with the, uh, with the sharp knobs almost all the way down. Um, I don't know. It just it just feels a bit um, a bit more more substantial. Um, I think it takes a, like a millisecond for the wave shaper to actually open or something in it. And it anyway. Um, so I'm thinking, where can I get more attack? And of course, we've got a parallel distortion circuit. Um, so this has been actually uh, really helpful. Um, so with just, I don't know, maybe just over halfway on the drive and maybe a quarter of the way up on the mix. Um, we're definitely getting a, a faster attack. So you can take some time to kind of... to kind of tune it up. however you like it. Uh, I actually have also experimented with uh, kind of using the delay uh, to kind of mimic the resonance of the body if it were something like, like a, a steel hang drum or something where you would get this whole kind of resonance happening while playing it. Um, so. So I haven't really gotten that to a place um, that it's kind of usable for me yet, but I'm sure if you take your time to kind of play around, you could definitely get there. Also, I'm, I'm using the LFO as a modulation source, but I actually have my LFO locked at the moment. If you've got one of the newer Lyra 8s, it'll have, um, it'll have a three-way switch in the and or position, and in the middle position it actually locks the LFO. If you've got an older one like mine, if you put the sync in the down and the and or in the up position and just dime both of the frequency knobs, it'll also uh, just lock the LFO. Uh, anyway, with yeah, just a little bit of drive with your sharp knobs pretty much all the way down and with kind of nice warm hands and actually, so this is where I wanted to get into the actual playing technique. I, I find I like to use two fingers uh, one kind of on each pad, and I feel like that gives me the best kind of uniform response uh, over every pad, and, and something that, again, that's like a little bit more controllable. 
Um, And you're still getting a, a huge kind of dynamic range with this as well, where it's it's not so much about uh, the velocity of, of hitting the pad, but the the time. Uh, the, the length of the strike. Uh, that was just another cool thing that I wanted to show everyone. Uh, I also kind of wanted to invite anyone who may be doing some of their own cool uh, stuff with the Lyra, any sounds that you found that are, or techniques that you found for sounds that are reproducible, um, something that you can show and, and someone else should uh, potentially be able to kind of recreate it, uh, please comment or send me a message because um, I think it would be really great if we could just kind of I don't know, create like a database of cool reproducible sounds, especially for new people who, who haven't uh, who haven't used a Lyra 8 before. Um, in the end, it's just going to make more music for everyone, right? So yeah, uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you next time.